<laughs> How's it going guys? Welcome to another Soul Encoded video. Uh, recently, yeah, my channel has been growing thanks to Joma, shout outs to him. Today we're going to be talking about a question that I get very often and that is what programming language should I learn? So let's talk about that. So the thing about this question is that it's just one of those questions that get, it, it's probably the most common question for someone starting out, you know, what language should you learn? Because they're just, you know, to simply put it, there's so many different languages. What I usually like to do when I try to answer these kind of questions um, that are kind of vague and kind of could be, a, there could be many right answers, I always start with the why. What is the end goal that you're trying to achieve? So with that frame of mind, answering this question is almost as easy as kind of a mapping. So you say, oh, I want to do this, then you should learn X. So it's almost, um, for most cases, it's kind of like that. So um, that's the first thing that I would want to start with. After you have answered that question, the next part is like a more practical answer. So let's kind of break down like what possible goals that most people have. Uh, when it comes to programming. So it could be learning mobile development, web development, some um, like data science related things, game programming. Let's just take those like four things real quick and um, kind of break it down, for example. And you can do this with any any kind of end goal and, and then map it to some language that you and technologies that you need to learn. Let's just start with mobile development. Let's say that your end goal is to make apps and like iOS apps or Android apps. iOS is like Apple related products, Apple products, and then Android is either like Google or like Samsung devices, right? So if you want to learn iOS, you should probably learn either Swift or Objective-C. Both of those languages was created by Apple and it's mainly, it was created to make Apple apps. So obviously it's the perfect tool. Not saying that that's the only way to make iOS apps these days, but those are like the main two languages that you want to learn. Um, there's a history behind Objective-C versus Swift, so you could look into that or I could go into it another time. Um, but for Android, it would either be Java or Kotlin. And uh, both languages are officially supported by Google. So yeah, they're both great languages to learn. Now, those are kind of the native languages for uh, each respective parties. But these days, you could actually make mobile apps with a lot of different languages. For example, you could use React Native and React to be able to make iOS and Android apps. You could also use Flutter, which was created by Google, and use a language called Dart, which was also created by Google, uh, to be able to do a very similar thing, make iOS and Android apps. And also there's Xamarin, which is uh, another framework that uses the C-sharp language. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different ways. Um, so what are the benefits of like using a framework like React Native or Xamarin or Flutter? Well, the benefit is that you use one language to write for both application and you write the app essentially just once. So this is pretty powerful, it saves a lot of time. It also allows developers, uh, allows companies to hire certain type of developers to be able to work on both platforms. So there's just like no, there's no divide. There's like, um, there's tech, technically you should have um, parity in terms of features. So no one's like lagging behind each other because you're working on the same product at the same time. Um, so that sounds amazing, but why would anyone like not choose to do that? There's many different reasons, but I, I think if I go into that, it will take a little bit too much time. But if I were to give a recommendation, I would say for now, if you're interested in mobile development, stick with either Swift or Kotlin um, for iOS and Android. With that said, let's move on to web. For web, it's, all, it's a little bit of a no-brainer, but we do also need to kind of distinguish between front-end and back-end. For front-end, it's all about just kind of working with the UI, like basically what people see. It's the face of the app, essentially. And the back-end is the logic and the heart of the app. You know, it does the heavy lifting, essentially. So what languages should you learn if you wanted to get into front-end? As a given, you should learn HTML and CSS, and you should learn JavaScript. JavaScript is probably the most popular language in the world, at least in terms of like GitHub stars, GitHub repos created, you know, all that 
all those types of metrics. Um, but yeah, uh, JavaScript is supported by major companies such as Google, they have Angular, um, which is a framework, and React from Facebook, which is another framework. And there's like an open source framework called Ember.js, which is what Apple and LinkedIn uses. But yeah, a lot of people use um, JavaScript, and JavaScript has a huge community. So. JavaScript is probably the number one choice to learn if you wanted to get into front-end web development. But yeah, so let's also talk about backend. So backend is a little bit more complicated when it comes to like what's the best backend language. You know, that is up for debate, and I feel like it's another video on its own. But I'll just give you a few suggestions in a way so that you could choose what you want to learn. You can use Java. There's Spring Boot, which is very popular for enterprise. There's Python, you could use uh, Django or Flask, which is just another framework that allows you to make backend APIs very quickly. There's also Ruby on Rails, which uses Ruby and the Rails framework, Clojure or like Go. Um, with, also with JavaScript, you could do like Node and Express. Um, but yeah, there's like a ton of backend languages and frameworks that support, you know, just making APIs and other backend related work. But yeah, so how do you choose like what to learn. Um, this one, I'm gonna just give you guys an advice because um, there's two ways I would solve this problem. One, I would look at, I would do some research on companies that I wanna potentially go into. So make a list of like 10 companies that you wanna get into or like the types of companies that you wanna get into and um, do some research on what technologies that they use. So let's say that you want to get into like an enterprise kind of company like Fortune 500, um, then I would say Java is probably a safe choice. Like somewhere in some, like let's say even Google or no matter what, somewhere will have like Java in their stack, somewhere. Um, even startups, you know, a lot of people tend to say Java is like old school, but Java is a very popular language. So yeah, Java is a very safe choice. I would also say Python because Python, especially when you're starting out, is a great language to learn. A lot of companies use Python and more and more these days it's becoming like kind of the go-to language to do um, uh, very quick backend work. Um, Ruby on Rails was like probably the most popular backend for like startups like past eight years, but things are starting to change a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I would say Java or Python. and. If you have, if you if you're interested in both front end and back end at the same time, then you know learning JavaScript and Node and Express is a great option too. But I recommend either Java or Python. Moving on, let's go to data science real quick. Let's just hit it. Um, there's only a few choices here in my opinion, which is Python for like data scientists, um, programmers who are like more like data scientists. Um, there's R for who are more of scientists. Uh, and there's also Scala. So those are like kind of like the data related um, languages. Uh, again, I would recommend Python mainly because it's like the easiest. But if you are really like serious about machine learning or artificial intelligence, then or like data manipulation, like all the real work is done in Scala. So Scala is a great choice. So moving on to game development. So game development, there's a few choices here, but if you're really serious about making video games, then you have to learn C++. For example, all the major like uh, AAA studios, you use uh, like C++. It's like the de facto standard. Um, but if you want to go into like indie development or like some, even some AAA uh, companies will use some like C Sharp and Unity. For example, Hearthstone is made in Unity. So Unity is kind of like React Native in the sense that you write the game once and you could compile it to many different platforms. <laughs> but yeah, like that's that's the cool thing about Unity. Um, but you could also do uh, game development with like just the native languages if you want to make iOS apps or Android apps. There's like frameworks that allows you to, um, you know, essentially write your games. So for example, you could do like Coco S2D or LibGDX to be able to write your games in the native languages. But yeah, uh, so think about the job that you're trying to do, the goal. With a little bit of amount of work, you can figure out what you want to do. That's kind of like the general pattern that I go, I go through whenever I'm trying to learn something new. Some new uh, language, I kind of ask myself, well, what is this used for? For finally, I guess the last thing is for like general programming. You're just getting into this um, and you're interested in programming and you want to kind of dabble and learn about how to think like a programmer. Then 
for this, I'll give you guys an advice. I would say you should probably start out with Python. Um, Python is probably the easiest language to get into, easiest language to learn. Um, it's kind of written like English, I would say, and it has really it has a really good community. But the the nice thing about Python, in my opinion, that it um, it's kind of strict on their formatting, which I feel is very important for new programmers because um, if you format your code cleanly, then it's easier to reason about and it's easier to like. Um, get into it dig into it. Um, you could like kind of struggle with the <coughs> Formatting in the beginning a little bit, but besides that Python's like super straightforward um, The other language uh, if you're if you're up for more of a challenge, I would say is to learn Java um, Mainly because Java will teach you about types and object-oriented programming um, Those things uh, Java is very good for that and the other benefits of learning Java is that once you learn it you will have access to a lot more um, books essentially a lot of um, traditional like algorithm books um, data structure books you know all these books are kind of written in uh, I would say the majority of them are written in Java and even it, it, like the cracking the coding interview book is written in Java. So if you know Java, you'll be able to consume this medium um, a lot more easier. But yeah, so those are like kind of the general tips I would say. Um, but in the end, no matter what, it doesn't matter what language you choose, as long as you stick with it long enough so that you understand the programming concepts and learning how to think through problems and be able to solve problems. So yeah. But I highly recommend you guys to pick one language in whatever it is and then stick with it for a good amount of time. If you keep jumping from one programming language to another, you're not, your progress will be very, very slow. So that, those are kind of like my main tips. Just to review, you know, um, think of what you want to do. So find something that you're passionate about, you know, to solve like the problem that you're trying to solve. So whether that be mobile development or making apps uh, iOS apps in general, pick that one language until you're able to kind of master like programming concepts. And then you could pick up another language for whatever reasons that you want to do. But I would say for most people um, to just getting started out, you, you really just need to know one language really well for a long time. Like people don't care if you know like 10 languages. As long as you can do your job with the language that the company needs you to write, then you should be good. But yeah, that's it for this video. I'm going to Korea soon, uh, so I might miss a video during that week. But I am going to continue posting new content. I just recently got a lot of subscribers, so I'm still not sure what to do with all the new subscribers that I've gotten. But yeah, I'm happy to like work on this content and um, you know put out like just good material that people could consume and you know just like encourage people on, along the way through their journey to become software engineers. So. Yeah, leave me, um, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.